Hello and welcome to another training video. Now this is yet another one in the AutoCAD um, updating blocks uh, series. Um, however, this one is going to focus on using Power Query in combination with AutoCAD. And what this will let us do is do some complex filtering on a combination of not only the blocks that are in my drawing, but also the blocks that are in the library that I want to update them from. And what I could then do is I could look at the blocks in the library and just choose the ones that are authored by a certain person or the ones that have a certain date when they were modified. Um, and that's the date modified in the library rather than the ones in my drawing itself. Okay, so let's have a look and see why we might want to do that. So here we have, again, the same drawing again. Uh, we have various different blocks that I've used in this drawing. I have Vanity, I have B-Day, and I have WC. However, when I go over here, you'll notice that I also have Sync in my drawing, but I don't have any instances of it in the actual uh, model space. So two different ways I could do this. I could actually just look for the ones in the model space, or I could look for all of the blocks, including the ones that I haven't used. Um, and Equally, when I go to my block library, I have various different blocks here, and I have an elephant and an owl in there as well. Now, clearly they're not in my drawing, so there'd be no point in me trying to update them in the drawing, because that would cause an error, because it wouldn't be able to find them. Equally, I don't have a copy of sync in here, so I actually don't want to update sync as well, because I don't have the newest copy of it here. So what we're going to do is we're going to use Power Query to actually um, create a emerged, um, well, effect, effectively it's going to be a merge of two queries. The first query is going to be on the output from this drawing, and the second query is going to be on the, the metadata of the files in here. So let's go ahead and do that. So first of all, let's create an output from this drawing. So we just say extract, create a new data extraction. I'm just going to overwrite the one that's there. And I'm going to choose all objects, click next, and now I'm just going to choose the ones that are blocks. Now you'll notice I've got the three blocks in my drawing, but if I say don't just use the ones that are in the drawing, that will also select the ones that are in my drawing but not been used yet. Now what I can do here just to quickly select all of them is just right click check all. So if there were dozens and dozens that had come up there, that's a quick way of doing it rather than going through and trying to check every single individual one. I'm now going to say next. Um, I'm going to, again, just right click, uncheck all, just go to the drawing, right click, uncheck all. I'm just going to say, for example, let's choose author. The authors for these will be blank. Um, or it may come up with my name, but it'll be the author of the DWG file, the master file, and not the author of the individual blocks. Uh, click on next. Um, yep, it's coming up with me because I've got my name set as the author. Now I don't need to see a count of them. And I'm going to click next. I'm going to output to a certain folder and to a certain file. So there's the file I'm going to output to on my desktop. I'm going to replace it, next, and finish. And that's now created that file on my desktop. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave CAD for a moment, and I'm going to go into Excel, and we're going to create a query. So from Excel, I'm just going to open up a blank workbook, and I'm immediately going to save this and I'm going to save it as, uh, again, on the desktop. And on my desktop, if it eventually gets, uh, what should we call this one? Um, let's call it CAD uh, block name. And that's just saved it as a standard Excel file. Now, if you wanted to put some uh, VBA macros on here, for example, you could save it as macro enabled. Um, we're not going to do that at this stage. What we are going to do is create a couple of queries. So our first query is going to look at the whole of that folder, which is our CAD library. So from the CAD library, what we actually want to do is we want to get some of the metadata. 
So I'm going to go into my catalog library and that's it. It's now going to show me a sample of all the metadata and I'm going to go in and transform this. So I don't actually want all of the files that are in there, I actually only want some of them. So when it eventually opens up, I will say transform. And there are quite a few things that I want to transform within the data here. The very first thing is I want to filter out all of the ones that are not DWG files. So I'm going to go there and just select the ones which are DWG files. Now this gives me my owl and elephant as well as all the others. Now that's fine for now. I don't obviously want the detail from within those files. I'm just actually creating a list of the files themselves. And I also don't want the extension as part of the name. So I'm going to right click. I'm going to split the column by a delimiter and it's going to look through and say that the dot is the probably the most likely one and I'm going to say split at the rightmost delimiter because that would be the file extension. I'm now going to say well actually I don't want various other columns now so I can select all of them and just remove those columns and I don't need that one either and we could also now have a look at these attributes here so let's not do that let's just have a look down here and see if there's any of these attributes that we do want to choose now actually from here there aren't so we can delete that as well so i can remove that column but if there were any attributes you wanted to use you could have used that as well um, okay so that's what i want from my uh, my CAD library, my block library. So I'm going to say close and load. And I'm going to always do close and load two um, because I only want to create a connection at this stage. Now I'm going to do the same again for that CSV file that we just created from CAD. So I import this. Um, now there's an important step here that we need to do because although that looks right, we need to transform the data because it's not quite right because we need name and author to be our heading. So transform the data. It will automatically do that for us. So when we go into the transform, uh, if you look in here, and actually it's not done so in this case, so I need to go up and I need to use my first row as headers, which forces it to promote the headers. So that's perfect. That's how I want it now. So now what I can do again is close and load to, I want this loaded to a connection only. Now the reason I want it as a connection only is I'm going to right click here and merge these two queries together. Now the reason I'm merging them is because I want some items from here and I want some items from here but I only want the ones which are in both. Now you'll notice that these are, have capitalized first letter. This actually is capitalized all the way through. So I need to use a fuzzy match. At the moment it's matching nothing. So I need to use a fuzzy match. And I'm going to specify which fuzzy match I want. And the fuzzy match is to ignore case. So if that weren't already selected, that's what you need to do. Now it is actually finding all three now. So it's finding all three out of the five. Now the reason it's missing two is elephant and owl. It doesn't need. Now actually, what I also want to do is I want to make sure I'm choosing inner. Now this kind of match will give me only three items because there are three in here and three in there that match. So it will only give me the things which are in both files. That's exactly what I want as my query. So my query is now done. Um, I'm going to get DWG with blocks, that's come through as a table. I can expand that out and choose what I actually want from here. And actually, we'll notice that I don't actually want anything from there because I've got it already. So this has filtered the whole thing to only show me the ones that are in both. So I actually just use the merge as a way of filtering. So I'm now going to remove that column. So I've just got the file that I want. I'm going to say close and load to. This time I'm going to load it into my table here. So 
So I'm going to say existing worksheet. So I'll choose a cell down there and click OK. There's a problem. I need to delete that before I click somewhere. That's where it's going to go. So this is now my merged data. I could put slices at the top. Now the way we put slices, we're going to table, insert a slicer, let's say by the, for example, the name of the block. And I can play around with the settings on my slicer if I want to. So the user can now choose the name of the block that they want to choose. And we could then obviously create some kind of output sheet here. And so I could, let's say, filter by that one and that one. So this gives me the two blocks here, vanity and WC. Um, what I can now do is click there, select all of them, but I need just the ones that are visible. So I'm going to go to go to special, visible cells only, copy, go to my sheet two and paste. And now this file here, I could save that as a CSV. Now that will change the whole of this file to be that CSV. So you then need to save as something else afterwards. So just to do that slightly differently, I'm going to uh, hit save here to make sure I've got a copy of this and I'll clear the filter first of all. So I've hit save. So that will store my master data uh, with the query in it. And now I'm gonna to go to that sheet there and I'm gonna do save as and save it as a CSV. Now I'm gonna um, call it uh, just block name and I'm gonna call it block name filtered. And this is going to be a CSV file. It's going to come up with a warning telling me it's not going to include everything. I don't want it to. I just want it to include my filtered sheet, not the other sheet. That's fine. OK, so that's done. We've saved it. You'll notice that the reason we had to save before we saved as CSV is because by saving, this is now the CSV file. I'm going to close that file down. I'm going to go back into CAD and I'm going to load my application. So I go there, manage, load application. I want my update blocks number one this time. I'm going to click close. That's now loaded. I do UPD, update blocks from CSV, press enter. I'm now looking for the file that we just created from our query. So that's the one that is filtered. And this should only update two of the blocks within my drawing. It's not going to update sync either. So although sync is in there, sync wasn't in my uh, external library. So it's not going to update that one. It's just going to update the two that it finds in there. And that was vanity and WC. OK, I hope you found that useful. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe down below. And as always, thank you for listening.